What's going on, everybody? Welcome to TDY, Faith, Family, and Finance, where we grow more in those three areas every single week. For those that don't know me, my name is Winston. You can call me Winnie. Today, I'm joined with my boy, Nigel. Nigel, really, really excited to have you on, bro. Been brewing for some time, and uh, I'm glad we finally got the time to do this, man. This means a lot. Why don't you go ahead and no. introduce yourself, give a little bit of context about who you are, bro. Bro, glad to be here, man. Glad to really share this stage with you. Um, really being able to potentially tell a story that can be uh, beneficial to um, those beyond that are just, you know, here today and having this conversation with us. Um, but when it comes down to me, uh, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, anyone that's from Baltimore uh, really takes pride in where we're from, right? But I think that uh, so much of me uh, came from the experiences that I had. Um, I had a great I believe he was probably my sophomore year, my sophomore year uh, teacher who taught me history. He says that the environment affects the way that you live. um, And I've taken that with me. Right. So I've been able to live in a number of different environments from uh, New Jersey to uh, Miami to Orlando to Connecticut um, to L.A., um, spent some time in Spain for about eight weeks. So, man, life has been exactly what it should be and more. Respect that, man. Yo, that's one thing that I've always admired, like the ability to travel. Um, and even now that that like I have a family and all that, and, and it's not necessarily um, as easy to just kind of like pack up and dip. Uh, it's something that stays on my mind. And it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of putting off to where the kids are a little bit older or, you know, like we get a little bit of, of break because we both remote. Right. So we can technically right. up and dip. You know what I'm saying? It's just a that's matter right. about it being responsible. So yeah, 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 man, I'm, I'm definitely going to, I'm, I'm going to be on that Hopper app for sure, trying to catch them one-way flights wherever wherever they lead, man. But yo, listen, I um, before we kind of jump into this topic, right, I want to give you a shout out as well because you started, you know, your own platform, uh, your podcast as well. That's been really dope to listen to. It's going well, I'm, I'm sure. So why don't you go ahead and before we kind of jump into anything, just kind of shout yourself out a little bit. You, you're a little humbler than I anticipated. So go ahead and just let the people know where they can find you, please. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. So I um, I have a podcast called When the Ball Stops Bouncing. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I've played basketball my whole life, right? And when I think about all of the different places that I had the ability to live in, um, typically I took the basketball with me. So whether it was going to a new school or uh, being able to live in a new state, I was always the kid with the basketball. So people innately gave a fuck about me. Like they cared about me because I play basketball. Right. So um, but I believe that there is a life after basketball. Right. I believe that um, so many of the lessons that I learned in life and that I apply to my everyday life, whether it's through um, work or building relationships, or understanding the plays that need to be run um, in order to uh, be successful and to move forward. Uh, they all stem from one thing. They all stem from basketball. So um, on this platform, what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a space for people to understand that, hey, there are some amazing athletes in this world, but they became athletes in life. Right. So the journey to getting the scholarship was one thing, but the journey to being able to be a winner in life is another thing. And um, that's what it's all about. That's amazing, bro. Coming from somebody like me that was not like a like an athlete at a high level, like I didn't play any collegiate sports unless you count you know, the, uh, the, the intramural team or whatever, but like coming from somebody like that, like just being able to, um, like see the work ethic for a lot of the athletes, you know, I work with a lot of like the basketball players at NJIT, um, and bro, like you can, uh, let me put it this way. The most disciplined person in the world, if you're not physically disciplined as well, then there's something lacking about you. And I could look at somebody that is that is disciplined or undisciplined in every area of their life. But if they have a six pack and they're in that gym every single day, that's a disciplined person. So we can't like separate um, like the sports discipline from from other areas of discipline as well. I believe it builds on top of one another. I don't believe one is greater than the other, but I do believe that if somebody can do one, they can definitely do the other. So I love to see that like that blending of the of the disciplines, honestly, and, and the culture of sports, winning in that and then winning in life. Your, your, your podcast is amazing, bro. I love it. No, I appreciate it, bro. Let me just, let me just um, layer into what you just said, what you just said. Um, see, being an athlete doesn't just happen, right? Just like being successful doesn't just happen. So when you see these athletes, sometimes athletes have a connotation of not being the smartest people, right? And one of my buddies, he, he did an interview last week and he said, Hey, look, um, 
you put other people in that environment where their whole life or in their livelihood depends on what they can do uh, with a sport, right? But being successful in that sport comes down to your mind, right? Do you know the place? Are you mentally equipped to go play in front of 100,000 people or 20,000 people? Or even if you damper, you know, taper it down to 5,000 people, 3,000 people. But most people are scared to, to speak in front of people. So if you're intimidated to speak in front of people, could you imagine running out of that tunnel and actually performing in front of people and still having to communicate when the other person that you're playing against is actually really good at what they do as well? So I, I, I don't want people to undermine how much work goes into being an athlete. Like when I talk Thanks. about my story specifically, I made a decision when I was eight years old that I was going to be a college athlete. I decided that I was going to be a scholarship athlete when I was eight years old. Now, the work that had to go in from the moment that I was eight years old into the moment that I signed my letter of intent, I had to excel as a student. I had to put the right food in my body. I had to go to the right camps. I had to have the right tape. I had to have the right coaches, right? Because being successful in life takes a coach. You need to have the right coach that can guide you and mentor you and help you study and give you proper studying habits. I had to have some luck, too. Can we talk about to be a certain height? Certain bill, you know what that? I mean? <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course we can, right? I mean, it's it's it, at the Division One level, it's like 342 schools um, that can offer you a scholarship. 342 schools. So even if each school has 10 players on the team, 10 scholarship players, you're talking about 3,420 scholarships available every year. When everyone in the world wants a scholarship, Every kid in the world is playing basketball. Yo, this, this, you need some luck, but you got to work your butt off too, right? So those 5 a.m.s, those 6 a.m.s, those, you know, making sure that you pass your test because there's a thing called the NCAA Clearinghouse where if you don't have a certain GPA and you don't have a certain SAT score, you won't be putting that jersey on. You will not play at the next level. So it's so much that goes into it. So many moving pieces that I think gets undermined when you see these individuals play on TV or get a full scholarship to play at some of these top notch universities. Bro, I want to I want to touch on this really quickly because I was watching this Colin Kaepernick special on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like growing up black or something. It's Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Um, and in it, he talks about how uh, it, as a, a junior in high school, the only reason that he was able to start at, at quarterback is because he got the proverbial white man stamp of approval, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. essentially that like, because the system is so set up, not in our favor, that whenever we need to progress to that level, somebody from a higher point or a higher stand has to vouch for us. Right. And that is indicative of today. Like black people didn't get rights in this country until white people recognize, oh, shoot, some of my black friends might actually need rights. That's and right. I, I just found that so interesting that like even it, it goes back to like the slave trade mm -hmm. in today in sports. Right. And still today in things like corporate America, still in today, things like funding. Right. For for venture capital. Right. You need that white man stamp of approval if you're going to progress in life. What are your thoughts about that? So I actually take a different approach, right? So, I, so when I look at their approach, I look at it one of two ways, right? One way I look at it is in the scholarship standpoint, when you're going and you're being recruited by these different schools, if NJIT recruits me, now I am academically eligible in the mind of some of these other uh, academic institutions where maybe a Cornell will recruit me, right? Maybe a Princeton will recruit me, right? Because now you have put me in a bucket and you said, hey, this person is this person. Or let's just say in the case of corporate America, if someone recommends me for a job that currently has that position, the chances of me getting that job go up drastically, right? It's a multiplier of the chances of me getting that interview as opposed to if I just went and applied, right? So it's like, okay, well, if we know the rules of the game, how do we play the game so we can be effective and we can open those doors for others as they come behind us? Okay, expand on that, please. What are the rules of the game how do we open them up to other people? I need you to bring that out a little bit more, please. Yeah. So when I think about the rules of the game, I think about the people that came ahead of me. So you and I have a mutual friend, Winfield, right? Winfield has gone through certain things in life, in his life, personally, that I can take as a little bro or a younger bro or as a peer. And I can say, hey, man, OK, well, you're married right now. 
Um, tell me about marriage or tell me about relationships, right? So basically being able to have someone that have gone places that you have not necessarily gone yet and being able to um, allow them and being open to mentorship and being open to understanding that you don't have all the answers, right? There's certain things that, you know, you've done, Winston, that I can learn from because I haven't done it. So the mentorship or the coaching doesn't necessarily have to be at the age level, right? You currently have a kid and I don't. Winston, what would you do different if you had a kid, right? If you were me and you were looking at having a kid or you were looking at getting marriage, you would have some specific insight on what I should look for and what I should do. So being able to understand and have that discernment when it comes down to your relationships allows you to be the best version of yourself. I believe you can learn from anyone. Okay, so now let's tie that back to like the white man's stamp of approval. Because I, I, I really want I want to hammer this out because it's, it's something that, bro, it bothers me, man. It, it uh-huh. bothers me, but it's the truth. Like you need, mm-hmm. you need somebody to vouch for you unless you're not going to progress. Like in the Christian faith, we call that like destiny helpers, right? Like we call that mm-hmm. like, you know, um, uh, um, people that are going to like aid you to, to achieve your purpose. Bro, like if you don't have that, you don't have anything. Like, let's talk about the fact that like favor is such an under, underappreciated and under, under sought after gift, right? Yeah. Favor, like it, the Bible says that Jesus grew in, in, in stature and favor amongst men and God. So it's not just enough to be favored by God, bro. You need to be favored by men too. And I think that people really, really underestimate the impact, right, of, of relationships and continuing to build them. Like if we think about how God, for some reason, right. And, and he's, he's, he's the, the, the big God. So we can't, we can't question too much what he's, what he got in mind, but bro, he has designed this life in a way where we cannot do it without other people. Yeah. And if we try to do it without other people, we'll fail miserably. Actually, we'll be doing the completely opposite of what he designed. Right. So no. in, in, in that sense where we have God and we have people How do we work towards building favor with people? How do we work towards creating relationships in a way where they they can be sustained and mutually beneficial? And Mm. I'm going to ask you this on top of that, in the process of creating these mutually beneficial relationships, um, going into them with the mindset that, hey, this is going to be a mutually beneficial relationship. Is that wrong or should you just be looking to offer value? The first thing is favor ain't fair, right? Um, Man, God has had his hands on my life. Um, anyone that knows me uh, intimately, anyone that knows um, some of this, and, and we all have challenges, right? But this the different challenges um, as a student, as a person uh, growing and navigating through life, living in some of these different cities, it's never easy, right? You, you never have the answers, right? We're all um, kind of just laying brick by brick. But um, when I say that God's favor has been on my life, I mean that because um, there's so many different roads, there's so many different paths uh, that we can go down, right? I think that even uh, when I look at some of, um, you know, different instances and people that I've grown up with in elementary school, um, we all wanted the same things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're all in the same place today. Um, so when you think about some of these mutually beneficial relationships, I always think of what can I bring to the relationship? How can I add value to the relationship as opposed to um, what can I take? Um, and what I found is the more that I give, the more like it, it, it's the old uh, Christian saying is that you can't beat God giving given. Right. So it's like when I think about that, um, while I, I, I act like I chose my friends and I act like I choose these relationships or I act like I chose my career, I didn't choose any of this stuff. This is all a part of God's plan. Um, one book that I read every single year is a purpose driven life. Right. Because I like to understand that this life that I get the opportunity to live, these dreams that I have and that I'm chasing, dog, it ain't you. (laughs) Don't don't take yourself so serious. Don't think that like, oh, well, you know, I'm so great or I'm doing all this stuff. Winston, you know this, man, I was on TV now multiple times I was on TV playing sports, which I love basketball. Cool. Great. I got to go on TV on Amazon Prime. For a dating show. That was a great oh, show. That was, that was, that was, I appreciate Why, it, you watch that three times, actually. <laughs> I appreciate it, bro. No, I appreciate it. But it's like, that was never, that was never my plan. And I don't know why 
God continually gives me this platform. It'll continually reveal itself. That's why I constantly uh, spend time in my faith. I constantly pray. I constantly go to church. I constantly read my Bible. I constantly look to my devotion. But I've been using the same devotion since 2017. Believe it or not, I've been using the same devotion book since 2017. I get something different from it every single year. Every year, I read my devotion. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Because it's based off of where I am in my life. And it's no different than watching your favorite movie. If you watch your favorite movie today, and maybe you watch your favorite movie 10 years from today, you'll take something different from it. That's facts. Hey, bro, you know, it completely escaped me. We didn't even do the praise, pra- prayer, and uh, practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we kind of just hopped into the conversation. All right, let, let's, let's double back real quick. Let's, okay, let's tackle let's that. Back. All right, okay. so um, you want to you wanna start with the, the, the praise, prayer, and practice? Yeah, I mean, can I start with the praise? Yeah, absolutely. I start with the praise, man. So uh, first things first, man, I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for putting together this platform. Um, I want to thank you for um, allowing me to be a part of your journey, right? Because I see moments like this is just a checkpoint, right? It's a checkpoint in your life, but it's a checkpoint in my life as well. But we get to we get to reconnect. We don't get to connect, but we get to reconnect. Um, we get to touch base and we get to really just um, enjoy this time. We really get to break bread. We really get to um, share some of the many moments that we've had in our life, but um, we really get to talk about some of the different aspirations and some of the dreams that we have. Um, and I hope that it inspires. I hope it takes someone um, through their journey, regardless of what they're going through. Facts, bro. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. What about your prayer? Man, my prayer, man, I've been praying this prayer my whole life, bro. Um, any big decision, any daily decision, um, it starts with gratitude. I wake up every day and I say, thank you, God. Um, and the reason being is that um, I am a firm believer um, that every day that I wake up, it just means God isn't through with me, right? God believes that um, there's still energy in my body. There's still purpose in my body. So he gave me another opportunity uh, to be able to live out this day, live out this life, and really uh, being able to inspire. I always ask God to use me as a vessel. Um, use me today. Allow me to show up and be an extension of you. Um, why? Because I don't know who I'm going to talk to that day. You got meetings here. You got meetings, busy day. So what? I don't know who I'm going to see at the gym. We take for granted that we get to drive to the gym and we get to show up and we get to work out. Dude, that ain't you. The car has to work. Traffic right. has to cooperate. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, like we take all of this stuff for granted. You, you, you get to the gym, the gym has to be open, right? The, 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 the exercises that you, the body has to function. Your mind has to be in the right place. You have to feel healthy. Um, so I like to always um, reduce things down to its smallest form, right? Um, and then last but not least, I always pray to God and I say, God, um, can you please make it painfully obvious what you want me to do next? Make it painfully obvious. Whether it hurts me um, emotionally, spiritually, physically, because, um, you know, like yesterday, my Achilles felt a little tight. I'm not going to the gym today, right? Painfully obvious. But I'm sure that's because God has something else in store for me. So I'm going to go get a massage today. But maybe I need to go speak to the masseuse and we're going to have a conversation that could impact and change my life forever. That's how I live my life. Wow. You, that actually is so profound because um, everybody, I work in tech, right? And we, I, we, we both work in tech, I believe. Yep, um, yep. So everybody always says, you know, tech is great until it doesn't work. What yeah. about all the other times <laughs> that it works? Like, like we... Yeah. I remember getting into my car once and it did not start. This was a few years ago. And I was so pissed, bro. I was so mad, right? That it did not start one time. I look, cause I, I left the battery on it and it died. Um, yep. And then a couple like minutes later, while I'm waiting for AAA and all that to come, I feel like God just told me, what about all the other times that it started? No problem. Right, you never every time. You know what I'm saying? You like you. You never gave me praise for that. You never said thank you for that. But now Come you're on. crying about this one time, Come on, right? Man. So like, if we look at life from a, a half empty perspective, we're going to nitpick and we're going to index on all the negative times that things don't necessarily go our ways. Rather, if we look at the from the gratitude perspective, we see that hey, we are a lot better than we thought that we were. Wow, that was oh very, very God. profound, bro. We're a lot better right. than we were last year, right? All these goals that we set Facts. up, it's just stuff that we made up. We're like, oh my God, I want to I want to have all these material things or I want to go buy a house or I want to go, I want to make X amount of that. 
dude, relax. <laughs> it's all Thanks. working out. You're exactly where you're supposed to be, right? Um, a lot of the conversations that I'm having um, with my friends, a lot of my peers are athletes or former athletes, right? So we're so used to getting in a gym and working out and being strong and being macho. And next season, I'm going to be a better shooter or I'm going to be a little bit smarter at the game. Dog, this life thing, God willing, 80 plus, 90, 100 years. Let's just let's just enjoy today. Let's be as great as we possibly can be today. And let's check that box. Right. Let's be intentional about who we can help today. And let's check that box. Right. Let's just really just enjoy the so many gifts that we have. Let's just remember that five years ago, all the things we have the privilege of doing today, we said we want it. The places we live today and the way that like you got your wife, you got your family, you're healthy, you got a really good job, mm. you're progressing your career. How could we miss that blessing? Yeah. Come on, man. We we live in, in answered prayers today <laughs> and we still praying, crying, asking mm-hmm. God to answer more prayers. He's like, can you say thank you? I can only imagine if I had a kid not giving them everything that they wanted, not even everything that they wanted, like everything that they needed, as well as all the things that they probably didn't even ask for too, right? Like I, I, I picture that meme with like Jesus just standing like this, like arms wide open, yeah. blocking all these things from you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then one gets through and then you start crying because of it. I could just imagine how he feels sometimes. And now having a son, I see certain things where I'm like, he'd be trying to crawl off the bed and I'm like, bro, trust that your father knows that you're not supposed to go that far. Like, That's right. Trust, That's right. Trust, <laughs> trust where I'm putting you, please. I'm going to put you in this crib. I need you to stay here and stop crying because this is the safest place for you. So just like having that same perspective with how God kind of deals with us, that is, um, yeah, that's, that's eye-opening. That's definitely eye-opening. And, and, and Winston, let me, let me jump in because I don't want people to think that I think I'm perfect or I'm perfect. Yo, I struggle. Right. Like I have days where I don't want to go to the gym. Right. We have a company, Winston and I, we have a company that we're in the process of building. It's not done yet. Right. But like part of success that I've seen is just being maniacal. Right. Being able to say that, hey, look, I'm going to get a little bit better. And who put these time parameters on this stuff? Like when did we say that, hey, if I'm not here in the next five years and I'm a failure? No, you're not. Dog, keep going. Keep getting up, right? Like I've I've had I've had challenges in my personal life. I've been fired from jobs. You know what I say? So I don't really care because it's so much bigger than that. Because again, if you're praying the prayer, God make it painfully obvious. God make it painful. painfully obvious. It's gonna be painful. Oh, oh, God gonna show up. You gonna hear him and you gonna feel him. So the blessing, the blessing is, is in getting up, not going down, right? The blessing is, yo, okay, cool. You got fired. Now what? Now what you made of? Because if you're about what you say you're about, I've been cut from teams. I've been told, no, you can't play at this level. When I was growing up, I, 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 got, told, I got told from one of my high school coaches, uh, you're going to be a Division three player. My response Damn. was simple. I said, like, right? Because that's just, Damn. it wasn't my goal. You know what I mean? It's, that's it. And, and, but he, he may not have been wrong. He may have been trying to make me be better. You know, he may have been trying to light that fire um, underneath me, or he may have been speaking from his vantage point. Because you know what he was? A Division three player. <laughs> so I couldn't be better than him, right? <laughs> I couldn't be better than him, right? So sometimes you do outgrow your coaches. Sometimes you do outgrow your mentors, right? Um, but one of the blessings that I have had is when we talk about balance and we talk about faith and we talk about, again, God showing up, I didn't get to choose my parents, right? My parents ultimately chose me, right? My God chose me, but my mom and dad, they chose me. They made a decision. We get to live it out, but they made that decision, right? Um, But I have two of the best parents in the world because they allow me to be me. They love me and have raised me to be me. Um, And and, and, um, I, I enjoy growing, learning, loving, um, evolving, and being who I am designed to be. And I'm in constant search of being the man that God created me uh, to be. So when you look at it, a failure or 
um, when something may not go the way that you want it to go. God wrote this story. This ain't your story to write, big, write, big bro. This Facts. ain't you. <laughs> this ain't Facts. you. Facts. Bro, so talk, talk to me a little bit about um, your practice for the week. Mm-hmm. What's one thing that you're doing practically this week that's going to get you better? One thing or, I mean, <laughs> how much I mean, you want, man? You, you um, could pick one. I, I know you got 17, but you could pick yeah. one. <laughs> um, stay in the course. Uh, so stay in the course with me is being uh, intentional about every single day. Um, I mm-hmm. want to be intentional about every single hour. Um, one thing I say is that you wouldn't go into... Um, a big meeting. Uh, you wouldn't go into a game without reading the scouting report. You wouldn't go into the gym without having a plan uh, of success, right? So I always plan for success, right? Understanding that things are going to come. Uh, you're going to have to make a pivot. Um, you're going to have to figure out how to overcome some of the different challenges or the roller coaster of the week. Um, but I am extremely intentional about uh, each and every day when I wake up, what are my goals for that day? What are my goals for that week? Um, what are my goals for that month? Um, and what I like to do at the end of each day, and actually I haven't talked about this before, what I like to do at the end of each day is I like to tally up the things that I said I was going to do. I like to grade it like a test. So if I had 10 things I was, that I said I was going to do that day and only did seven, C student. Not a bad student, you're a C student though, right? So what? how do you grade that day? Now you take those seven days, how do you grade that week? Now you take that month, how do you grade that month? And I think that if you're maniacal about that every single day, every single week, every single month, you'll hit a lot of your goals. Facts. Facts. So one one thing that's always kind of stuck out to me was um, the approach that a lot of like successful people take with how they um, they set very trackable goals. Right. And and they track themselves. Uh, and. I, I see so much value in that. As a matter of fact, I track myself too. I got my whiteboard and I got my notes app open 24 seven continuously doing this. Um, but there, there comes a certain threshold there where you, you, you have to cut yourself some slack, right. And give yourself some grace. So even in the middle of, of being like, I love the word you use maniacal about these goals, right. In the, even in the middle of setting some uh, pretty lofty goals and working maniacally to get there. Um, you need to be able to take a second, breathe, right? Gratitude is what we just talked about and give yourself that grace to continue to push on for the next day. Man, man I, I love this already. I already love this conversation, man. And, and it, it has not even started yet. I have not even had asked the first question I got written down. So I'm gonna throw it out to you right now. Sure. Tell me one thing that you wish everybody either knew or one thing you wish everybody did? One thing I wish everybody knew. Um, or I, them, I, I, I wish people knew themselves. Um, I think that understanding that we're all a work in progress. Uh, I think that we all need to understand that we put so much pressure on being the final version of ourselves. Um, it's, like, it's like if you were to press play on a movie and then you go to the last... Uh, two hours and 10 minutes of the movie. You missed the whole movie, right? You, you, you missed the introduction. You missed the rising action. You missed the climax, um, the falling action, and, and you missed the big ending. Um, so I think that we all need to slow down. I think a lot of times social media speeds us up and we feel like we're behind. But in reality, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. So I want people to be intentional about spending time with themselves and spending time with their thoughts. What does that mean? What does that look like? Was a, well, so for me, what for me, it's like, what did I want to accomplish? Did I did I set out and accomplish what I wanted to accomplish? And I think that if I can write down the things that I wanted to accomplish and I do them, I can cut myself some slack. So I can see why a lot of people would hate that mm-hmm. um, because you, not you specifically, but like yourself, mm-hmm. most times are your worst critic. And, and it can be a very, very scary place. Just you, your thoughts, and these goals that you've written down to achieve. If you don't get to them, golly, you're going to feel it. You know what I'm saying? And especially if you're driven, if you're a driven type A type of individual, you're going to get on yourself for a lot of these things. So I could definitely see why some people would not want to take some time out and just self audit and self reflect. But guys, I cannot stress it is extremely important to make that time. You can you can criticize yourself without pulling yourself down, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, I mean, like, and, and again, I I fail every day. Like, because what happens with me is I'll set these goals for the day, but throughout the day, I'll add more goals to it. So <laughs> if I set five goals and I add three more and I now have eight goals, but I completed the five goals, I still came up short, right? But that's that's just a part of the process. I enjoy that. I enjoy that God gave me more throughout the day to, oh, well, yeah, now that you did those five, what, what else can we get done? Right. Or did you did you take anyone with you? Or sometimes, bro, we get a phone call from someone that needs you and that may pull you away from your world and things that you want to get done. So what? Facts. Yo, so I, the, the thought just actually came to my mind, like the difference between self-discipline and self-punishment, like being able to be self-disciplined and, and when you don't meet those goals to be able to audit and self-correct and reflect on that versus punishing yourself, berating yourself and pulling yourself down based off of you not being able to accomplish certain things. Can you talk to me a little bit about how some people can guard against self-punishment and aim more towards self-discipline? I'll start with self-discipline. Um, very much a self-starter. Uh, probably don't sleep as much as I probably should. Um, I'm in disbelief of sleep right now. Uh, because I see the opportunity that's ahead of uh, myself, my family, generations to come. Um, so my discipline is what moves me. My discipline is that I'm not competing um, against anyone but myself, right? So the self-discipline is how can I get what I'm supposed to get out of this body, out of the talent that I've been granted with? And that's the responsibility to be exactly who I'm supposed to be with the talent and the gifts that I have, um, the punishment is, um, there's always more, uh, the punishment is being present. The punishment is giving up time with loved ones, giving up time with friends because of your self-discipline. Um, the punishment is hitting your goals and creating more goals because, as a former athlete, all you know is there's always another season. Um, so sitting in that, right? It's almost like some would actually say, um, when do you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor? Um, and I think with the brotherhood that I have, um, I'm getting to do this stuff with people that I love and I care about. Uh, my family is invested in me, in my ideas, um, and I don't take that lightly, but that's the punishment. Damn. Is that is that where the idea, I, I mean, you talked about it a little bit, but I could see how that ties back really well with when the ball stops bouncing, right? Like you mentioned, there's always another season when you're an athlete. You're conditioned to think that, like, oh, we'll get them next year, right? <laughs> what happens when when there's no next year? Right at, at that point, or, or better yet, what happens when you know that there's not going to be a next year, right? I can just see, I can imagine how the intensity of the current season skyrockets, right? Now let's apply that to life uh, for like people that are not athletes. Um, when you know that there's a pivotal time in your life where you're coming up and making a huge change, you're getting married, you're having a kid, you're starting school again, you're moving to a new job. These kind of pivotal moments, you're graduating, for example. And you know your next season is not going to be anything like your, like your last season, right? There's, there is no next season, proverbially. Um, I could see how that anxiety and that stress can, can increase to the point where uh, it, it almost becomes unimaginable because now you have to set new goals, right? And not just set new goals in the current agenda that you're used to, you have to go outside of that to now create new lofty goals because you're still a driven person, right? And these goals are going to be semi unattainable, right? Because that's that's kind of how, you know, um, extra driven people set goals. Um, I could see how that stress level is. I could see how that stress level is enough to 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 make a lot of people quit prematurely, mm -hmm. right? And 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 while I do recognize that. I do think that there are things that we can do to guard against that. You can talk to people. You can lessen your goals. Like there, there needs to be a, a acceptable threshold. This is what I call it. 
right? Mm -hmm. There needs to be an acceptable threshold for success. So the the way that I kind of define that, um, I have a very lofty goal to pay off almost half a million dollars worth of debt in four years, right? Um, That sounds crazy to a lot of people, uh, but I, I do not care, right? But now, can I get so caught up in, in, in achieving that goal that I live so frugally that I don't take my wife out on date night, right? We, we eat in spam in the crib because I'm trying to pay off, you know, a, a half a million dollars worth of debt. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, can, like what, what is that acceptable threshold where I'm willing to sacrifice some of those goals that I'm, 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 I'm working towards, right? And, and I think that that can only be done by setting that threshold, right? Like you need to define a timeline, right? Your, your goals should be smart. I don't remember like the full acronym, but like, I know they should be um, specific, measurable, um, uh, and, and trackable, right? I don't, I don't remember the other two, but like- That's about all yeah, I you, to. You yeah, I'm, saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, bro, like, uh, but like very, very specific goals, right? Do you have a specific goal in mind? Can you visualize it? Can you actually see it? Is it, is it, is it achievable, right? right? Like, is it something that is realistic that you can actually get to? Um, and is it trackable? Can you like, throw a spreadsheet out and, and make sure that you're working towards it. I feel like on top of those, you really also got to ask yourself, like, am I will, like, what am I willing to give up to get this? And what am I not willing to give up to achieve this goal? Yeah. And that, that's the threshold that I'm talking about there. Have you ever experienced like a situation where you've had to set like that acceptable threshold about what you're not willing to give up? And let's talk about that a little bit. What was it? Yeah. Um, Cutting deep, man. <laughs> um, no, it, it's it's. I've never really seen a benefit in being realistic. Um, anyone that knows me, I, I don't look at things like, oh well, this is logical, right? Like, and I think that anyone that's ever done what we set out to do had to be unrealistic. You didn't just say, Hey, look, I'm going to build a billion dollar company. Like I'm not, I'm not in it for that. That's, that's too small for me. That's been done. I want a hundred billion dollar real estate company. I want a $200 billion real estate company. Why am I only doing a billion dollars? They have projects that size, right? So um, going back to being younger, I, I didn't have the blueprint on how I was going to become a scholarship athlete. Not that I was the greatest athlete. It didn't have to be. That was my goal. I'm going to hit my goal. I'm going to wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. every day, and I'm going to work out. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to work out at lunch. I'm going to go back to school, right? I'm going to work out after school. I'm going to go to study hall for three hours. Why be realistic? What, what, like, I don't have a point of relation. I don't know what's real. I like it's uh, so many times. Anyone who knows me knows this, dude. I live in my own world. I don't care about all this stuff of people saying, "Hey, you can only do this." Probably, I don't care. You can't tell me what I can do. You can't tell me what's possible. I don't know what's possible, but I know if I wake up every single day and I get better every single day and I attack my weaknesses while while accentuating my strengths. I'm going to be able to get closer to that goal. I don't know how much time I have, but I know what I'm going to do with the time that I have. I can handle that. I can carry that load. So I'm going to take more on. I'm going to take more on. I'm going to do more. I'm going to see what's, what is possible. I'm not going to let you define it. Why would I let you define what I can do? You've never been me one day in your life. You can't tell me what I can do. Doc, I'm built different. Because I already overcame everything they said I couldn't do. So, who, so who said I could do this stuff? You know what I mean. So I, it's like I, I feel like ahead. I feel like you're speaking, and I I, I hear the dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I, I hear I hear it coming. Is that your approach to everything that you do in life, including entrepreneurship? Yeah, bro. It's like, bro. I, I want this. I like I genuinely see an opportunity um and that's why that's really why I enjoy doing um this business that that, that Winfield and I are creating right I I enjoy I I like man I see an opportunity that no one else saw 
right? And, 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 and the, the, the easiest point of relation that um, Winfield and I have is we went to a high school that lost. They didn't win. They weren't good at winning. They didn't know how to win. But I had my brother with me. And before you knew it, they were calling us winners, right? We went to NJIT. And NJIT, they weren't winners. But we won before. We did this at high school. We became state champions. We were players of the year, right? We, 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 know, what, we know what winning looks like, right? And there's no coincidence why people, people, teams, teams that win typically win. Teams that lose typically lose. Now, if you look at the habits on why winners win and why losers lose, it's usually pretty different, right? It's night and day. Um, so it's just like, man, I, I, when it comes down to entrepreneurship, I'm patient, but I'm hungry, right? So I want to hit my goals every single day to become closer. I don't need to win the championship today. You don't win the championship today. You win the championship by being consistent over time. Damn. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you and I see it. I see it theoretically, but now I want to see it practically. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's one thing to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to work towards all my goals. I want this, like I'm, I'm striving for it, et cetera, et cetera. But, and then it's another thing to say, you know, show gratitude um, every chance you get for what you have. Uh, But what happens when you want more than what you're grateful for? You know, like I, I think my, my toxic trait is I think I could change the world. Yeah. Right. And that might not be realistic to a lot of people, but once again, I don't care. Right. I feel like if God blesses me with the level of influence and finance that I believe that he will and can, um, like we can really impact this world for significant change. Now 100%. in the same sense where my eyes are literally in the stratosphere right now. And that's where my head is. That's where I think that's my realm. Um, I, I drive into my garage every day and I'm like, God, thank you for this white picket fence and this little family that you blessed me with in this little cul-de-sac, you know, in this home, this would be enough for a lot of people, but I want more. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like that's a curse sometimes. Like, I feel like that's, that's, that's a bad thing to say and want more. But at the same time, I feel like it's not. Because if we even go back to Genesis, bro, God said, go have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. Over every living thing. He didn't give man dominion over man. He gave man dominion over the earth, which means we're supposed to create and reproduce and then reproduce that that creation, right? Like that's that's that dominion mandate. So I, I really don't get why people try and talk people down to just subservitude, you know, like to, right. to, to mediocre. Um, in the same sense, I don't think anybody should push anybody to, to, to go to the sky if they're not already there, right? Like everybody should just leave everybody at their level. And for the people that is trying to reach the sky, find rock with the people that are trying to reach the sky. For the right. people that are fine, you know, with their white picket fence, there's nothing wrong with that. Living, you know, nothing wrong with that. At find all. the people that are fine with that. Find your circles and blend in your circles. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. Okay. So that so that being said, I'm not crazy. You're not crazy. I could We're be just crazy. in the same circle. I, no, no, no. That, that Cool with it. Cool with being crazy. Okay. I'm cool with okay. being crazy. So, to some people, I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> just find find your circle is what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Like if you're watching 100%. this, just just find your circle. You know, like you don't have to be crazy. And, and let me tell you, like when when I first started working with Nigel um, and, and building this company, uh, that that's what I noticed. I'm like, oh, these niggas is crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and I could either play against the crazy niggas, or I can play with them. Yeah. So you know what I did? I said, I will play with y'all, right? Yep. Um, yep. So just just, just find your crazy. That's all I'm saying. You know what well, I'm saying? It's, it's funny, though. So like, when and I were on the phone earlier, right? And we're just working through stuff. We're like, yeah, like, all right, cool. You know, we're having, like, we're having our meeting. I'm like, all right, well, y'all got this done, got this done, got this done. He's like, yo, I'm just trying not to be the weak link. I'm like, dog, dog. You, he would man. say that. 
Yeah, I'm, bro, when I, we, we were on Zoom two nights ago. Granted, I'm on the West Coast right now. We're on Zoom till 2 a.m. He got a wife and a family. He like, he trying to do his part. I'm like, I can't sleep. I can't, if he willing to stay up till 2 a.m. and make sure that we get there, I can't sleep. I can't wait. 2 a.m. West Coast time? 2 a.m. No, no, no. 2 a.m. East Coast time. He's up 2 a.m. East Coast time. That's what, 11 p.m. my time? I'm like, man, I can't sleep, man. I got to make sure I'm ready for tomorrow. If he's willing, if if his buy-in is that he wants it so bad, he wants it so bad. Like, and it's not money. It's what what we're doing. This is impact, bro. This is impact. This This ain't about money. Man, to God be the glory. We have that. We have what we right. need to be able to be okay. We have that, right? When we think about impact, it's like, man, in this real estate game, we want people to be able to come to their house and be able to show people five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, and say, I grew up in that building. This building was a part of making me who I am, right? We want to pioneer what we call a Baltimore-style building. Right. Where when people go up, you know, how you have like these these houses you see on Instagram and it look like L.A. houses and you got like the whole you got the view and the big windows. What we want to build yeah. is we want to build that Baltimore style. Right. That Baltimore style building where it's like when it comes down to real estate development. Yo, this is the only way to do it. These guys pioneered it. Right. We put our capital up and we were able to get these first couple of projects done. But it's not about what we did. It's about who we can take with us. Right. It's people in our community that don't know these big buildings are being built in their community until they're being built. Why don't we own them? Why don't we own a piece of these buildings? Why are we paying rent on the first and not getting paid on the first? Right. Why are not we creating that movement, man? There are movements being caught and people are being sold one way or another every single day. What side of the pendulum do you want to be on and who can you take with you? When you have your passion, when you have these things that you're doing, who are you taking with you? Who's going to be able to enjoy um, the ride? Who's going to be able to go on a ride with you? Man, I, I, I can I can sincerely say, man, my mom is in uh, some of these different real estate deals with me. Uh, some of my best friends, my brothers, my sisters. Like, man, I want everyone that I love and to care about to own a piece of real estate. Because I know what it's done for my life. I know what it's doing for my life. I know what it's going to do for generations to come. Right? So it's like when you have something and when you see something, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. And I want everybody to be able to go on this journey with us because they can. So I I love how you said once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. True words have never been spoken, bro. Like once you can visualize it in your head and now you have a blueprint, like if you have a mentor or you, you've seen somebody accomplish it, that's when things become possible. Like think about Moses parting the Red Sea. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. Like that was a one never done before thing. But even after that, somebody was able to do something similar and cross, cross the Red Sea, right? It, it's a, who, who's going to set the trail? I that's know right. from my, my house and my family, bro, I'm setting the trail. I'm being the trailblazer, not just financially, bro, but I'm going to be the first healthy household in my entire family. I'm going to be the first one to not get a divorce in my family. Powerful. I'm going to raise my kids properly in my family. Bro, I'm breaking generational curses. And I'm telling that. you that it doesn't just start with money. And it doesn't stop with money either. Bro, this is about impact. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Which is why, bro, we can't make stupid decisions. I can't I can't go celebrate your birthday in Miami with you, bro. No, no. I'm thinking about four generations from now. Like, there you I, go. I have to set in, I have to do right by my son now so he could do right by his, so he could they could do right by theirs, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not just going to leave a million dollars in the bank for my son. I'm yeah. going to leave a full inheritance. You know what I'm saying? So when we talk about this impact thing, bro, like you'd also got to, you got to realize you got to surround yourself with people oh, that yeah. are willing to also sacrifice what it takes, bro. Yeah. That's the punishment that you mentioned, mm-hmm. the sacrifice mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. of, of time, of, 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 of self, bro, to achieve what you're trying to achieve. Most people just aren't willing to do that. And it shows, it shows honestly. And I can't require or expect you to want to go on that journey with me. Right. I, I, it, Absolutely. It's okay. Right. Like just because I am so excited about this or I'm focused on this or I want this, these are my goals. I can't expect you to want to go through that with me. 
You know, and that's and that's the punishment, right? The punishment is sometimes people will think you're crazy. Sometimes people will think that, hey, this just is not for me. And I'm okay with that. And I've been okay with that ever since uh, sports, right? Like, so, and I know I always use sports examples, but I'm just telling you, like, when it came down to sports, it changed my life because, you know, Winston, I know you're not one of these guys, but I had guys on my team that didn't want to work out every day, right? Some guys wanted to work out really hard on Tuesday and they wanted to work out really hard on Thursday. Well, guess what? You're going to be in the gym with me on Tuesday and Thursday and I'm going to get your best. Some guys wanted to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They were three time a week guys. Love those guys. You gonna get, I'm going to give you my best Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, if you look at that, that's five days, right? Now, let's just say I'm a Saturday and Sunday guy, and I just want to get in on my own. Now, I got seven days. Or maybe you're a morning guy, and I'm a night guy. So maybe I worked out in the morning, and you want to work out at night. Now, I'm going to get your best energy at night. So for my second workout, maybe I don't really feel like going. But because you're going to go, and you're going to go hard, now I'm going to get a much better workout because we're going to spend that time together, and we're all going to push each other to our goals and get better and be able to achieve and be able to move slightly slightly closer to our goals that we set collectively, which was a championship and how we define the championship could be different, but a win is a win. Man, a win is a win. A win is a win. Bro. All right. So, so talk to me about 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to see how Nigel sees himself 10 years from now. I know how I see myself, but I want to hear your thought process on how you do. Yeah. I think that when I look at 10 years from now, um, I think the passion's still there, um, but I think that the infrastructure's there. Um, I think that Ooh. a lot of the decisions we're making today, we know why we're having to make those decisions, uh, but I think that we'll have the infrastructure where we'll be able to surround ourselves, similar to like you said, um, with people that can assist in making these decisions. Um, we can have subject matter experts, not in just one area, but in every area. Um, so 10 years from now for me, as a subject matter expert is a wife. Right. I could have a wife 10 years from now. Um, I could have a child uh, 10 years from now. Uh, will I still be flying around like crazy? 100 percent, because that's part of my life. That's part of who I am. Um, but then, you know, when you think about, you know, even uh, my family, my parents, um, it's a certain life that I want to see uh, them being able to achieve uh, because they've communicated some of their different goals. Um, and, and I would like for that to be uh, more than possible for them uh, 10 years from now. Um, I mean, you can really just break it down in buckets, right? Are we talking about um, career-wise? Are we talking about spirituality, right? On the spirituality side, um, man, I want to be, I want to be lockstep with God, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, and it's, it's always a thing, right? But it's like, man, I, I don't ever want to waver in my relationship, but I want my relationship to be so much stronger um, and, and, and as passionate as I am um, about some of the other aspects of life, I want to be that passionate um, about my relationship with God, right? I want to be able to um, be able to work in solitude and being able to uh, spend, let's just say, 30 minutes, an hour or, or an unquantifiable amount of time um, with God, because ultimately he's directing my path. Um, so what does 10 years look like? 10 years from now look like a blessing. Um, Amen. It looks like uh, the opportunity to be able to take others with us, right? Because there'll be uh, someone at that point, I'll be 40. There'll be someone that's 30. Um, that'll be where I am today. Um, and, and, and if I can build that bridge for them uh, to be able to, let's say, cut down uh, their journey or their path from 10 years down to three to five years or maybe even one year. Um, that's my purpose. That's my job. Um, and most importantly, I hope to be here 10 years from now. Amen. Bro, I love so you've, you've you've been dropping dimes all day. I don't even think you know. You probably catch it when you watch this back, bro. You said 10 years from now, the infrastructure will be there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That is what takes the longest. Have, have you ever seen, obviously, you're, you're in real estate development. So you've mm -hmm. seen buildings go up, bro. Like the thing that always takes the longest to go up is what? Like the... the the, the base and the infrastructure, right? Like That's right. you can't go drywall if you don't frame the house properly, if you don't plumb it properly, if you don't throw in the electrical and all that, bro. Like a lot of people get so caught up in the ultimate goal that they forget to build the infrastructure to sustain it. And That's then right. here we have these very combustible uh, growths and rises yep. met with these very flammable and destructive ends because it was not sustainable. It's That's always right. been my goal to never grow past what you can sustain. 
And I believe God is merciful and just enough where he won't grow you past Mm -hmm. what you can sustain. If you think about it, that's why the children of Israel, they got sent to the wilderness. God said, these fools is not ready for a fight. I want to bring them into the promised land. I want to take them into there, but they're not ready to fight the people that are there that they're supposed to displace. So let me take them on a two-week detour that ultimately ended up being 20 years because they still did not, they didn't, they didn't use that wilderness time, that two weeks, they didn't, they didn't use a building infrastructure. They, they wasted it. So God had to extend it until they were strong enough to finally go in and do what they had to do. And I, I'm, I'm just so impressed that that came to your mind because it sparked, it sparked this in my mind as well that bro, like you're not running out of time. You're not, you're not falling behind, bro. You're building infrastructure. That's right. Yeah. Keep no, that's, building your I, infrastructure. I, I think that's spot on, man. I think that we take that for granted uh, so many times in life. Nothing great happens overnight. Um, one of my one of my favorite trainers growing up, um, he used to always talk about he likes to um, crock pot or he likes to slow cook his athlete, his athletes. Right. As opposed to just having a microwave solution. So in the ACL era, which is the one that I grew up in, a lot of athletes were turning their ACL. Um, they were going through uh, what was called like a bigger, faster, stronger program. Um, what they were doing was they were putting on so much weight in the summer. They may gain 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds and their frame, their infrastructure couldn't hold that weight. Wow. Right. So his whole thing would be, hey, like, let's get you some functional weight. Let's get you about five to seven pounds. It's going to improve your game or it's going to allow you based off of the way that you move. It's going to allow you to be a little more effective in these areas. Right. And that's just let's just say that's year one. But then year two, we want to be a little more effective. Maybe it's our lower body or we want to put a little more muscle around the shoulder. But let's have some target areas that we want to improve on. And then when we look at 10 years from now, now we're a seasoned vet. Now we're a pro. Right now, we're one of the best in the business. So it's all about being able to take your time. It's all about being intentional. Right. And and, and let me just let me just talk about being intentional for a second. Um, A big part of my study when I'm studying or when I'm learning is um, I want to be able to see what the best are reading. Um, what some of the best are studying, right? Uh, what's that curriculum, right? I never got the chance to go to Cornell. Um, Cornell was a school that recruited me coming out, but what's their curriculum look like when it comes down to business? What are some of those different textbooks that those guys are reading, right? What are some of those uh, uh, novels that those guys are reading? What's a Cornell uh, person look like, right? So as you start to model your game, which is no different than what I did as an athlete, I'm watching Kobe Bryant, I'm watching your LeBron James, I'm seeing how they work off of their pivot foot, I'm seeing how they shoot their jump shot, why, why, why wouldn't we do that in everyday life? Why wouldn't we model um, or admire, right? Because the biggest, the biggest form of, um, of, of admiring someone is really plagiarizing some of the things that they do the best, right? So if I, if, I, if, I really, if I really see something I like within someone and it's working for them, why wouldn't I look at what are some of the different ways that I can mimic and learn some of the things that they know? Why would I try to reinvent the wheel? Yep. Well, amen. Um, I don't know if you know, but you are a man of God and you, um, you should probably uh, start preaching. I I feel like you, I feel like you got the gift, bro. I appreciate it, bro. I feel feel like you got the gift. Um, And I, I'm going to take the conversation a little bit left because, um, Gifts aren't always tied directly to anointing, mm. right? So um, yeah. think yeah. about like anointing, yeah. like, you know, God's approval, right? Like mm-hmm. God's favor on a gift, right? Yeah. So you can have a gift um, and you can, or, or a skill set, and it can be not submitted, right, to, like to, to God or, and, to, and to Jesus Christ, and it can be used outside of his purpose. If Very I took so. this microphone right now, Right. Um, it has a, a, a wide body, a, a nice frame. Right. And I used it to stop the door. Right. Is, is this mic a successful mic? Mm-hmm. Well, no. Right. Because even though it is successful in what it's doing currently, <laughs> it's not successful in its ultimate purpose. Right. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to use the last couple minutes of this of this pod, bro. And I just wanted to like speak life into you because I feel like you really do got a gift, bro. And you gotta you you can be a blessing 
You have been a blessing to a lot of people, to me specifically, um, and you can continue to do so with that gift submitted to God. And, and I know you well on your way, bro. I appreciate you for taking the time to come out here and talk to me, man. Hey, bro, let's let's end this thing out real quick with our uh, last segment. If I were a boy, if I were a girl. So, you know, you Can know I how that goes. If I were a boy. You, you, triggered, you, you triggered my brain. Oh, man, go for it. Go say, for it, bro. Uh, when, you, when you talked about the gift and being able to be usable, right? I think that um, like a lot of times we say like your gift will make room for you or um, like you use the example of the mic. Uh, but one thing that my dad used to say, and I'll, I'll say it in a condensed version, but he used to tell a story about the chicken and the eagle, right? And a lot of times people don't know the story of the chicken and the eagle, but the, sto- the condensed version of the chicken and the eagle. I don't know the, the story. Eagle. Tell the whole story, bro. <laughs> tell the whole story. You're good. You got time. <laughs> the condensed version of the story about the chicken and the eagle, right, was there was this eagle that fell out of uh, fell out of the nest, right? And the eagle was, um, you know, found itself around chickens, right? Because I'm a bird and you're a bird, right? So if we're both birds and we should be one and the same, right? And I think that you talked a little bit earlier about being around people that serve you, being around people that bring out the best in you, being around people that make you feel like Winston. Right. Um, but this eagle, what it did was it spent a lot of time around these chickens and um, the eagle, would, you know, try to walk around and move like a chicken. But the chicken would always make fun of the eagle and be like, look at your eyes. Your eyes are slanted and look at your beak. Your beak is all pointy and look at your wings. Your wings are all long. Right. And it's like when you think about that, sometimes we can find ourselves in the wrong room or not working within our purpose. So when you get back to your purpose, what happens is, and again, I'm telling the condensed version of the story, um, but a, a, a mama eagle saw this eagle amongst the chickens and um, the eagle was sitting along the side and the eagle is over there sad and crying. And the eagle, the mother eagle says to the baby uh, eagle, he says, well, what's wrong? And it says, well, all the chickens are making fun of me and they're talking about my beak and they're talking about uh, my wings and they're talking about my eyes. But see, one thing that chickens can't do is chickens can't fly. So the, the whole premise of the story is chickens can't fly and eagles soar high. So what the, what the mother eagle told the baby eagle is you need to go work on your purpose and you need to go soar high. See, an eagle can fly high up in the sky, but a chicken will never be able to fly high up in the sky. It doesn't make one better than the other, but what it means is let's just make sure that we're activating our purpose and that we're feeding our soul with the things that we need to feed our soul with so that we can be the best version of ourselves and that we can serve this world and we can fulfill the purpose that God built us to uh, serve and fulfill on a day-to-day basis. So for all my chickens out there, it's nothing wrong with being a chicken, right? And I think that you talked about this a second ago, Winston, where you said, hey, look, it's nothing wrong with the white picket fence. See, for me, I like the white picket fence, but the the difference is I want to build a white picket fence. I want to give people their white picket fence. I want to create community within a white picket fence, right? So in the case of an eagle, I want to soar high. I want to fly. I want to see how far we can actually take it. Right. Because that's, that's it's no it's I have not ever seen the benefit of being realistic. I've never seen that. So I don't want to be realistic. I want to be an eagle. I want to soar. I want to see how far we can take it and who ultimately can we take with us as we go on this journey. So I just wanted to leave you with that, bro. You know, chicken. And nah, eagle, that's man. amazing. Thank you. You just put me on because I, I think I heard that now that I think about it. But I ain't hear it like that. So yeah. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the put on, bro. Hey, bro. So so tell me, man, if you can distill this entire conversation down to like a a 10 year old version of Nigel Mm -hmm. in three sentences, how are you going to do it? Yeah, I would just say never be realistic. Right. There's no benefit in being realistic. Um, I would say wake up every day and give it your best shot. Um, As cliche as it sounds, that's really all it really takes. Um, anyone has ever accomplished anything great, they woke up every day and they did it again and again and again, right? I don't think that there's any secret sauce. The things that you like are the things that you like, and you can do those things. You can be great at those. Ultimately, you can be the best at those things. So why stop? Why quit, right? Three years is not a valiant effort, right? Five years is not a valiant effort. 10 years is not a valiant effort because if you keep thinking about it, if it's important to you again and again and again, and you want to do it, why not be the best at it? Why not go hard for that? Why not see what you like? Maybe that's your actual purpose. Maybe like, maybe it's not attached to millions or billions of dollars. So who cares about that stuff? You get to set the barometer of what success is. No one gets to tell you whether or not you're successful. Don't fall for the trap, man. You can do it. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, y'all. 
I, I hope y'all was able to really hear this man and, and, and y'all are able to take a lot of the stuff that we talked about today and really just apply it to you, your, your daily life. Hey, listen, Nigel, thank you so much again for coming out, man, and talking to me. Yo, where can people find you and get a little bit more information about you if they're looking? Of course, man. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, um, I don't really share my side of the story. Uh, this is actually the first time in my life that I've ever uh, shared my story. Uh, typically, I'm on the other side, um, learning and listening to other people um, about their life. Uh, I'm a learner. Um, I'm a listener. Um, I love a good story. Um, but the easiest way to stay in contact with me uh, would be on social media. Uh, if you go to Instagram, uh, it's my first name um, and my last name, uh, Nigel Sidnor. Um, I'm sure Winston will tag it somewhere. or um, hopefully It's above your head, right? Yeah, there you go. It's oh, I was about to say, okay. <laughs> it kind of just, That's smart. Yeah. I'm going to do that. <laughs> That's pretty smart. Yeah. yeah, so just trying to make it easy um, for you. But, I mean, at the end of the day, um, again, I'm to be used as a vessel. So uh, if you have any questions, if you're inspired or – uh, you're just going through life. Uh, use me. Send me a DM. Shoot me a text message. I'm accessible. Um, I'm not bigger than anyone. I'm going through life just like you. Facts. And, and he's not joking, y'all, because I'll be texting him and the TikToks, <laughs> and he be we, we be going into philosophical conversations about them for sure. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all good. Yo, Nigel, appreciate you once again, bro. Everybody, make sure to check out all the information down in the description. I'm um, looking forward to talking to you guys on the next episode. Uh, stay driven. Peace.